Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I wanted to take you back in the archives to go over how to sharpen a crosscut saw again. This small cast steel device is called a saw jointer. It's used to set the height of the teeth on a crosscut saw as it's being sharpened. One of the first steps that you do is you place the file in the saw jointer. You loosen up this screw that backs off on this clamping device. You set the file inside the jaws of the jointer, then gently tighten up the screw until it's just snug. Why do I say gently? The jointer can be used to set the teeth in a straight line, all of the same height and all an equal distance from a straight line drawn down the center of the saw or it can be used to set the teeth in a curve pattern called breasting. A breasted saw cuts a little faster because only a few teeth are involved in the cut at any one time, so the load is forced onto a smaller amount of teeth, making them cut deeper. It's also used to allow more sawdust to be swept out of the kerf of the saw blade. This file is set to cut a straight line. If I tighten the screw up, puts a bend in the file. And causes it to cut on a curve. Too much pressure can actually break the file. We only need just a little bit. I want the crosscut saw that I'm filing today to have flat teeth, so I've set the file to hold it at a flat angle. These are the teeth before jointing. You can see one's broken, and all of them are slightly staggered as far as height. This is the saw blade after the teeth have been jointed. The tops have been knocked down to the point where they're all even, but now they need to be dressed with a file to bring the points back up. That way the teeth will all be the same height and cut evenly. In the sharpening a ripsaw video, we talked about the importance of using the right size file. The proper size file needs to sit in the tooth and leave about half of the file exposed. This saw is filed with fleam. In other words, the teeth aren't cut straight across like the ripsaw. They are angled, and they are angled in two different directions. With the file handle down like this, this side of the gullet which is the gap between the two teeth, is deeper than the other side of the gullet. The reason for that is it allows for a sharper tooth at the tip and it gives you more depth in the gullet. As you go into finer and finer saws, that makes more of a difference. We're going to look at the teeth and find the teeth that are tipped the other direction 
teeth are set in both ways, if you recall. One tooth is set to the left, the other suit tooth is set to the right. That gives us a wider kerf to allow for the saw blade to clear. At the same time, we want to file our saw blade so that when this file crosses the tooth, it sharpens the tooth on this side with the burr coming off of that side. Then when we sharpen the tooth on that side, it comes through and the burr is on this side. That way when we set the teeth, the burr will be on the side that won't be exposed. So we set the angle, and we stroke once, twice, just like the rip saw, no more than twice. Once, twice. As we go across the teeth, you can see that the tooth shines up out to the tip. That's what we're looking for. Now we loosen the saw blade up. Slide it down to the next section and continue. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.